The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello and welcome to this special 12-minute webinar on the federal budget for 2018. My name's Derek Nolan. I've been doing these webinars for a number of years now. You've probably seen some of them before. And, and as we've done the last few years, we've put together a, a quick summary um, of the uh, federal budget that was on last night. What I've tried to do here is just really try and pick out the things that I would be interested in, and therefore a lot of my clients and other people would probably be interested in, in as well. There's a lot of obviously political rhetoric that goes through in a budget, but I just try to pick the eyes out of it and make things as simple and easy for people to understand. So that's who I am, Derek Nolan. I'm the owner um, of 12 Chartered Accountants. And as I said, I've been doing this for many years now and really enjoy uh, my webinars. So hopefully you can watch a few more of them. Go to my uh, website and, and have a look at them. Okay, let's get started. So the the main thing the, that came out of the budget was the tax cuts. Now the first one, and the, probably the, the only one really to talk about today because some of the other tax uh, cuts uh, from 2023 onwards. So the one we're talking about straight away is this low and middle income tax offset, which is going to come into effect from the 1st of July 2018. Now, this is in addition to the already existing $445 low income tax rebate. So see how there's a little difference there? One's called a low income tax rebate. The other one's called low and middle income tax offset. They work exactly the same. And this is the way it works. So a lot of people are talking about tax cuts and things like that from last night, but it's not actually a tax cut. It's actually a rebate, which means the government or the tax office will pay the first bit of your tax bill. So what that means, though, for people who earn their taxable income every year is between $0 and $20,542, they're not actually going to get any benefit from this because up to $20,542, you don't pay any tax. Now, a lot of people think the tax-free threshold is actually $18,200, but because of that low income tax rebate, which we just mentioned a second ago, the $445, what that actually does is it pushes your income, the tax-free bit, up to $20,542. Because if your income is $20,542, your tax on that is $445. But that ATO paid the first 445 of that, which brings it back to zero. So this new benefit, the low and middle income benefit, if you're not paying any tax up to 20,542, well, there's no benefit for you. Okay. There's a small sliding scale then between 20,542 and 21,595, where you get up to $200. So if you're in that little bit there, I'll leave my 150, 160, whatever it is, but up to $200. Then between $21,595 and $37,000, that's where the tax um, rate jumps up from 19 to 32 and a half, you get the full $200 benefit. So basically, whatever, if you're earning $37,000 a year taxable income, you'll pay tax on that, but the government will pay you, in addition to the $445, they'll pay you another $200 to reduce your tax. Once you have a $37,000 up to 48, there's a bit of a sliding scale up to 48,000, so you're gonna get somewhere between $200 and 530. But by the time your taxable income reaches $48,000, continuing up to $90,000, you'll get the full $530 low to middle income tax rebate. Once you go over $90,000, it starts to fall, and by the time you get to $125,000, you're not getting anything. That's the way the political parties can then reduce people's tax in the lower or the middle income tax without actually the people in the higher tax brackets also getting the benefit. So just for all you visual spatial people out there, I thought I'd put this graph together. Just did this myself this morning. So... There's the rebate down the side. You get either $200 or 530 or a, a variation. Along the bottom, you've got your taxable income. So basically between zero and 20,542, you don't get anything. 
Then after 20,542, it ramps up very quickly to $200. And then you get that $200 up to the 37,000, then it jumps up on a sliding scale between 37,000 and $48,000, and then it flatlines out to $90,000, by the way, this is not to scale, but um, you, you get the idea. And then after $90,000, where you're getting the $530 rebate, again, just reducing your tax by that, it drops down to um, nil at $125,333. So if you're getting, your taxable income is $125,000 neat, you might be getting a couple of, couple of dollars, enough for a cup of coffee. Okay, so I thought as a, as a visual diagram that works really well and people sort of get then how it actually works. And like I said, it's actually a, a reduction in your tax payable amount. So people who aren't paying any tax, those earning less than 20542 won't get any benefit at all because there's nothing to reduce. Okay, moving on. Now, I'm not even going to talk about the tax cuts that are proposed for 2023 and 2024, where they're messing with the um, the, uh, the scales and things like that. Okay, a couple of other things is the Medicare levy, which is, has been, was mooted to increase to 2.5% um, next year, isn't going to. Now, a lot of people don't even realize the Medicare levy is actually gone from 1.5% up to 2%. So it actually is 2% right now and they were going to increase it to two and a half percent but they decided not to so that's a good thing um, a couple of other things was this doesn't affect too many people but it may affect you if you are planning on doing this is deductions are now not going to be allowed for holding vacant land so what used to happen was if you owned a block of land and you were going to have that as an investment property in the future and you commenced your you know, approval process and getting an architect and all that sort of thing, your costs like your council rates, your interest was always a big one, and all those other expenses were allowed to be claimed as a normal rental property, just your income was zero. Now this sort of came about when, the, I think it was the collapse of one of the um, large building companies about 10 or 15 years ago, Beachwood I think it was, the tax office found a lot of people were had ha these half-finished houses um, that they weren't getting any income from, but they weren't getting any tax deductions for as well, so they allowed that. So they've obviously had to think about it. It's been long enough, and they're actually going to deny that. So basically, if you're um, developing, developing a property, uh, you won't be able to claim any of the deductions, big one being interest, land tax, and all those things, until you're actually earning income from that, um, from that land. Uh, a few other things, pensioners, uh, retirees are able to increase their income a little bit uh, without affecting their pension. It's always good to know that, but what I find is um, most retirees, they know that sort of stuff inside out. They'll be telling me um, those sorts of things. Uh, superannuation insurance, this is quite a good one because what happened, and I, I get why it did, like if you open up a superannuation fund, um, they have this thing where you have to opt out of getting life insurance because you know, many years ago people were uh, going to superannuation and not having life insurance and then you know, unfortunately something would happen to them and their family didn't have any insurance. So they made the rule where you actually have to opt to not have insurance in superannuation. The problem was then, though, I remember my niece had this problem when she started working um, and earned a few few dollars. Um, I think she had $28 going to a superannuation account, and then she stopped working, went to university. And then a year or so later, she got a letter saying she owed them $1,000 for insurance premiums. Because what hap actually happens is that the um, the insurance needs to be paid out of, you, the, uh, of your superannuation contributions, but if you're not got any contributions going in, well, who's going to pay for it? So what they do now, so if you are got a low balance in your super of less than $6,000, um, you're under the age of 25, um, or there's been pr pretty much an inactive account, there won't be any insurances provided for in those um, superannuation funds unless you actually opt into it. So that's a good thing. It's just sort of one of those things that um, you, you don't realise until it actually happens to you. 
Couple of little things for the small business was the um, the twenty thousand dollar instant write off for assets has been extended. Now it's been extended a couple of years now, so uh, will probably be extended again next year. But everyone knows that the the threshold is a ten million dollar turnover of your business. You'll be able to buy assets up to twenty thousand dollars and claim them all in the one year. Really important this time of year. Uh, a couple other things that. Now, if you're in the construction industry you and you have contractors, you have to fill in an annual reportable payment um, form every year for anyone you're paying contractors for. Now, that's been extended to security providers and investigation services, the road freight transport industry, and really importantly is the computer design and related service of so all the IT people out there who are contractors and contracting to another computer company or design company, those amounts are going to be reported to the tax office now on their behalf. And particularly if you're contracting your service to someone else, you then need to fill in those forms and send them to the tax office. Been doing this for the building industry for the last five or six years, but they've decided to extend that. A couple of things in superannuation. If you've got a self-managed superannuation fund, that has now been increased the number of members that you can have from four members to six members. Don't have too many superannuation funds that have um, more than two members. So, so there's a few out there that might um, make that important. Um, if you have a self-managed superannuation fund, obviously you know that every year you need to be audited. So what they decide to do there is to make it a little bit less stressful and only get superannuation funds audited every three years. So that's important. So, but what I find without reading the detail is that you need to have the first three years done. So if you set one up today, and then after that you go every three year cycle. Um, and that's about it. So I did it 12 minutes on the dot. So again, if, you're, um, if you want any more information, feel free to say hello and drop me a, an email to info at 12.com.au. Give me a call on that number there. Check out my website. I've got all the other webinars I've done over the years, which I really enjoy, and particularly the small business people. Um, there's lots of really good stuff for them. All right, I'm going to leave it there, and thank you very much for listening, and uh, goodbye for now.